Welcome to Wycliffe Well. Outback petrol stop. Watering hole. And self-proclaimed UFO capital of Australia. I was driving to work, just as usual, and it was around about quarter past eight in the morning. Doug Moffat is an amateur astronomer with a story to tell. When I looked in the distance, I saw a, a black object hanging silently and very still in the sky. I had no explanation for what this object was. He's been investigating UFO encounters for the past 20 years. Wycliffe Wells UFO history goes back to the Second World War during the 40s when servicemen based at Wycliffe Wells saw repeatedly objects that they could not explain. During the last 70 years, there have been hundreds and hundreds of sightings in this very remote part of Australia. You might wonder why aliens seem so keen on an isolated part of the Australian outback. Why Wycliffe Wells is a very interesting question. It's so flat here and there's so... Well, there's no light pollution. There is nowhere for ET to hide. The likelihood of us confirming ETs probably largely depends on whether science gets on board and treats this subject as a real science and starts doing some real investigation. Well, there's good news for Doug. The hunt for alien life just got serious. And another remote part of Australia is in pole position to spot it. Seems like an awful waste of stars and planets if, if we're the only intelligent life in, in, the, in the universe. Australia is very fortunate in that the centre of the Milky Way goes literally over the top of this dish every day. The centre of the Milky Way is where most of the stars we can see are and where alien life may be. Professor Matthew Bayliss is part of a coordinated global effort to find alien civilizations. And while he doesn't think they've made it to Earth in person, there are reasons to be optimistic. In 2007, this telescope picked up a mysterious signal. I remember that night I couldn't get to sleep. I was so excited. This thing was both so loud and so incredibly far away that it must represent a new phenomenon. This intense pulse, later dubbed an FRB, or fast radio burst, was a complete mystery and a complete one-off until six years later, when another 10 signals were detected. We know that they're coming from enormous distances in the universe, and the amount of power that they m require is something completely incomprehensible to us, and we thought was almost theoretically impossible. Impossible signals prompted impossible explanations. I think the most radical theory is that if aliens are using radio waves to propel spaceships across the, the galaxy, that during the short, intense burst of radiation that they use to propel them, that would generate something that looks a hell of a lot like an FRB. I think it's a pretty nifty idea, and the fact that we've been detecting these things that maybe aliens were like launching spaceships is, is pretty cool stuff. Although Matthew is yet to be convinced by the alien spaceship theory, a new urgency has taken over the global effort to find alien life. It's time to commit to finding the answer to search for life beyond Earth. Physicist Stephen Hawking has teamed up with a wealthy Russian entrepreneur in the $100 million Project Breakthrough Listen. And as its first step, Matthew has kicked off the biggest search for alien life ever undertaken. This telescope will search far deeper than we've ever done before. A million stars in total will be surveyed for alien transmission. 
there's going to be a supercomputer in that tower which is going to divide the, the spectrum into a billion radio stations that we're listening to. It's not a guarantee of success, but it's certainly going to be so much better than anything we've been able to achieve before. And there's no one more eager for Matthew to find answers than Doug Moffat, back in Wycliffe Well. Never saw the object again. Uh, I'd never seen anything like it again. To this day, I'm not really have any explanation as to what that could be. Given the immensity of the universe, we're certainly not alone. Thank you.